Titans. Home state, he's super happy to be rooting on another Virginia team <laughs> here. The same one as last week. We're going to talk about Slater and manually. Cyber still the most underrated of the collegiate tanks out there. A big reason that's, why. The that's Bobcats what we claimed last so week, good. Billy. Yeah, a lot, I mean, it's, it's still true this week. Uh, Frodo <laughs> is still a, a gem of a main support. Oh, yeah. or flex support and Jimical, of course, pulling up on the main support side. So as we take a look at Converse, Jeff, Let's talk Hold about on, who before, we know. Oh, go ahead. I wanted to highlight manually real quick before we get off that. We don't have to switch screens back. Just the Tracer player was it's actually sick. going toe-to-toe -to -toe <laughs> with Rocket last week and was sick yeah. and had one of the best pulse bombs I've seen, I mean, all season, hands down, going back into fall. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tracer roll by the way, but you know what? Here's let, let's take a look at this commerce roster because manually the rest of the Bobcats. Uh, well, I mean, that's, they're gonna have their work cut off for them. This this squad has a lot of synergy. Uh, Hammer, Garchomp, and the rest of the team have been playing together for some years now. The only newcomer to this team is Ginger that they picked up back in fall. Was actually brought in to play tank, but they really like Garchomp in that tank role. So uh, Ginger has since moved into the DPS role, uh, joining Hammer there. But the rest of the four, I mean, the synergy on this squad is undeniable, Billy. Well, and the other thing is that still Kiwi is now in the States, uh, not playing out of Israel anymore. So that's a big Valid. thing for them Good is that, that that still Kiwi is in the States, is at Converse, uh, and isn't playing with the rest of the team. So Hammer is the one that we were talking about, that we have the uh, high school connection. We've got the Best Buds connection there as well. I There's a lot. HSCL. HSCL, yeah. I mean, way back in the day, uh, we have watched this uh, young player grow oh. yeah 21 uh spring of 21 is when we started uh casting him uh out of a california school i believe it was yeah. um and we will see now what's gonna happen who is a a just a legend here in na on One the, of the best tracers and, in NA, for sure right and, and and made it hard made made rocket sweat so let's see if we continue this here in week number four i think it's gonna be a uh, a big point of contention because if manually can take over these flank angles and, and really get in on this death ball that Converse University is showing us, then I mean Hammer and Ginger are going to have to start turning attention to the back line. They got to make sure they can keep Orion alive. Once the fate has been used, manually will be able to move in and just clean up on that tracer. I think that is, uh, it could be, it could be a weak spot here from the Converse squad. Could be a tipping point. As this first map unfolds, the Symmetra is just going to be used to get out spawn manually right back over to that Tracer. Hey there. Okay, so the fact that we've got Cassidy out here uh, means that manually is going to have to head on Swivel because he did uh, have a little bit of a problem last week. But they did bring out a Cassidy to deal with the mobility. Uh, of course, you know, dealing with that, uh, with, with the grenade uh, really hinders you, uh, literally, in the game. So we'll see how that works. But the big problem is that Ginja's got to watch for Slater on the backside. Yeah, it's actually Slater that ended up going on the flank angle, mainly started in the off angle, and then Slater rotated around and picked it up. Cyber gets Ooh. caught out, though. Converse are able to keep everybody alive through that. Slater goes dashing in, looking to trade back Ooh. out, finds, uh, well, it's manually that goes down there from the shots from Hammer. One did fall from Converse, but they still got to win out this fight. Yep, I mean, this is early point potential here for uh, Converse University. I mean, look at Garchomp beating out Cyber, and Cyber has a very good Junker Queen. So that is the power of presence right now. That's uh, the power of sustain. Uh, and it's also the power of the magnetic grenade. Slater's going to have to be watching for that cooldown before they go in. Same thing with manual. He needs to watch for the Cassidy grenade to come out before they can press on these angles. Bobcats working around from the jump pad side. Jimical making an aggressive move here with the Tracer. Going to deep on the back line. He gets caught in the corner. Garchomp hunts him down. Finds him with their back against the wall. Speed now gone. Bobcats looking for another way in. Slater manually both at about half health. Cooldown's already used from Slater. They can't get back in this fight. And Garchomp and the rest push forward, surging onto the front line. Woo! Slater will get chopped down from a Ginger's railgun. It's Converse winning a second fight in a row. Yeah, and I mean, manually actually got that uh, got that pulse by about the same time that the blade came out. So, I mean, I was looking for maybe a possibility of a stick on the back line, but Orion was waiting and uh, ready for that pulse bomb to come. They had the fade available. Now you're going to have double support ultimates in this fight, plus a uh, rampage available to Garchomp. They played, played slow and steady. They've caught the rotations from Slater and manually. Now it's all about execution as we near the 70% mark. Really nice move to drop to the outside. Ooh, still Kale was sensed it coming. The spider senses were tangling, and still Kiwi gets away with the sound barrier still in their pocket. 
Well, Lessons fades as Garchomp finds manually right in the dome with that shotgun. That was nasty. That's going to leave a mark. Converse on track to win another fight, but Slater and Proto have other plans. Slater Whoa. picks up another, trying to bring this one back. It's a 2v1. I think it's just Slater left on this point as we cross the 90% mark. Yeah, I mean, you can basically, you know, lose this fight out and still have uh, almost a four-pack four of ultimates in this fight. So, I mean, the good thing it up? Bobcats. Yeah, they gave it up. I mean, it's just to disengage. It's just to get Garchomp in, uh, get this uh, get this Rampage off, pull the support ultimates out of Crota and Jimical, and then you can go in with your Deadeye. I mean, you've got so many options here. Let's see how they wear this out. This is that I remembered Cyber died first, so Cyber was the first one back. There we go, Rampage and Overclock out. Three hit from Converse University. Woo! And two fall with Deadeye in the back. Corral from Jinja into Hammers, welcoming Deadeye. Now a leaping move from Jinja over the top. Cyber is cut down. Converse University, man, they may lower in the Okra standings, but they have come out with a vengeance in map one. Yeah, I mean, they talked about how they, you know, GG's. Uh, even if they drop a map or two, they're going to be just fine. Well, uh, they're, they're hoping that will actually come to fruition. This is a great start for them. Smart. The disengaged unit who said, oh, they gave it up at 99. Well, it was 99 to zero. Uh, and they go ahead, you know, they regroup as a five. They know that they have the tactical advantage and all the ultimates. And they waited out so perfectly. This is it right here. Uh, this is the initial take right here. I mean, they were just very smart. They played as a five, man. They played as a five, and that's exactly what you got to do. You can see why Commerce was so... A keen on keeping Garchomp in that tank role. I mean, we see that that initial pick, that was first pick. They're on to Jimical, shutting down that move. I mean, BSC had some success with that move last week against Northwood. I mean, against top three team in the country, Jimical manually would go in together, and often they would find success. Garchomp just absolutely shut that one down. Leaning Converse to a great round one win. They didn't lose a single fight. They just had that one little disengage, Billy. I don't even think, I, right. I don't even think I'd call that a fight loss. I mean, it was even. So, yeah, I, I consider that just a tactical disengage. I don't we'll think we draw anything out of it. Yeah, we'll call it a draw. Uh, but, I mean, Ginja has come out on the Reaper here. So, Cyber needs to be very careful. And he's got to really weigh down these cooldowns. When to use the Shadow Step, when to use the Wraith Form, uh, get in and out of these fights. Bobcats do have both arms and legs. They're going to do more than just bleed on Converse here in this tiny hallway. You got to be careful, Ginger, on this Reaper. Slater's happy to go take that duel, and Jimical gets caught out in the meantime. Garchomp lands Gracie with terrifying accuracy. Now attention turn. Oh, did you get the boop? Got the boop. Proto's gone. This is the beauty of playing together. Uh, still Kiwi. This really Wunta Kid is getting it done. Holy cow. All right. Uh, that is like, what, now uh, four fight wins, four Converse and zero to the Bobcats. Uh, Converse has the fire in their eyes today. Uh, manually forced off the Tracer. You need more damage. You need more CC. Let's bring out the uh, Ash, which we saw them pull out last week and was very good on it as well. Edge, yeah, they're not finding any route into the back line. So can they try to play from range, see if they can outrange Hammer a bit. Well, that's it's out from a ride and Converse University are rotating around this right hand side. Garchomp's low and Hammer's dead. But they do manage to find Cyber. I mean, it's trading both DPS for the enemy's tank. Bobcast still have some teeth here as they come back onto this point. I mean, I think you have to. Well, I, I say that you have to. I, I think that you should invest in Skull Essence. There you go. There it is. Yeah, it's still coming immediately. It's melt Rampage from Garchomp trying to turn this around. They're going to find Slater on the back of that. There's no more ults, really, for Converse to use. They invest a Rampage and buy themselves some more time. It does allow for Jinja to get back into this fight with a Deadeye on the back of the point. Again, more time built up here from Converse. They could actually invest this Sound Barrier as well as they put the point at 76 points. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're now just going to basically, you know, disengage here. You're going to try and draw the Sound Barrier out of Jimical. But Bob has already been built up in one fight by Vanuely. Converse is going to come back into this so fast, though. Very well played macro from, from Garchomp and the rest of the team to keep the control of the point in their favor for so long. Still Kiwi holding on to that sound barrier you're talking about, which is good. Slater has a katana built up, ready to go, head to the sky. Here comes the Dragon Blade, and immediately the sound barrier is here from Still Kiwi. Boop as well, keeping Slater at bay. Oh, Death Blossom and only one fight of the map.
I mean, this is good stuff for them. Uh, you know, they, they invest, uh, what, two ultimates into the fight, and they get the maximum value. So now they've got the six man available in Bob. They still have their Rampage. There's no sound barrier to build you up and keep you sturdy through it. So that's going to be uh, a bit of an issue here because the Coalescence isn't going to do anything until that status effect wears off. I think still, Kiwi, uh, if it was me, I would have gone over to a Kiriko just for this fight and then gone back to uh, the speed back. Uh, the Lucio's just too important, I guess. Woo! Rampage immediately shut down. Cyber hit two before falling, but that is obviously less than ideal. Pro to try to see if they can make good on what Cyber started, but the Coalescence fade. Still, they're able to hunt down Orion even after the ultimate is done, but Hammer has clocked back two, looking for more. Oh, there's one Icicle. There's two Icicles. Tension turned to Proto. Oh, Proto faded back. The wall keep him in. Ooh. Yeah, Frodo managed to get out of there. Not bad, not bad. Able to stay alive, and that's important for this last engagement, Billy. Oh, and I mean, the Blizzard is available right now, so I mean, that's dangerous for them. There's nothing for them to defend against it, so I mean, it's, it's enter at your own peril. You've got to find an early pick. Slater needs to find the back line. Mainly took a lot of pressure all the way in the back right hand side of your screen. Blizzard out early. Disengage. Bobcats are low. Everybody scattering to the winds. Looked like Archop had found Slater. Ooh, Ooh. turns attention and chops Chipical in half with the carnage. Now solo ult on Cyber just to melt the Junker Queen immediately, which they do. Another one down. All of them fall under the might of Converse Sword and Spear. Will win out on map one. The macro that we're seeing from Converse right now is on a different level than what I have seen from them previously. Okay, and they, their tactical disengages are just absolutely incredible. They're willing to give up percentage points for a better fight. And this leads into what Hammer told you earlier. They're willing to lose a map or two as long as they win the war. And playing Widowmaker in Ash, then maybe BSC is betting that these, you know, Players who started off on tank don't have the aim to keep up with the likes of manually. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, we have seen uh, that Converse can absolutely hit those shots, and so can Garchomp. I, I'm not saying it's a good bet. I'm just, th I'm just theorizing what BSE is thinking, bringing us to Circuit Royal. That's all. That's. I'm just throwing out some theories, Billy. That's all. Oh no, no. I like it. I, I like what you're stepping in. So, I mean. Looks like the Monaco Five uh, here uh, from both teams. Uh, so this is actually a good look. I mean, it's double snipers. You're both going to have vision. Uh, it's all going to be about the front line and who is able to do what uh, with the resources at hand. I I'm looking forward manually. Manually needs to really step up here uh, and, and kind of take uh, these duels uh, and win them out. Careful, or right. oh, hero oh, protection. Never mind. Wow, they only did not <laughs> win that one out. We were talking about Hammer maybe not being able to like stand up with the likes of manually. Uh, that was, it took about what, 10 seconds to, for Hammer to prove us wrong has already found two domes. Well, indeed. I mean, that is two beautiful shots uh, out of Hammer. Hammer really putting the work in. These angles are absolutely filthy. Uh, kind of daring them to uh, do something here. Whoa! Oh, Hammer knows exactly Almost, where you are. Uh, oh yeah, 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 we're not scared. We're not scared at all. A little duel around the car door. Shooting up top. I think Shinji was just a distraction. Almost gave Hammer the shot that you need. You heard that bullet whiz by Manually's head. Slater's able to find Jinji to the flex supports. Also in a bit of a duel. Still, I mean, and with that kill, Bobcats are able to find some space on the back of it. Oh, oh and Hammer shot. falls as well. So later, you madman. Uh, this should be Garchomp going down as well. I mean, they've got some sustain there. Uh, yeah, they're gonna have to give up all this space. This is gonna be the first point being taken by, uh, by the Bobcats. Well, I say that. Well, yeah, I say that. Uh, that's definitely it. That's definitely yeah, getting with, out of Yeah, with Garchomp going down, I mean, yeah. Converse may struggle to get out of the hotel now. That's a nasty kill. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, roll reversals versus pure DPS. Oh, good God! <laughs> Slater doing the geometry. Just the slow motion, all the numbers, the calculations in the head and gets the, almost every one of those storm what? arrows hit. Oh my goodness. And I think it still does increase damage off the bounce. Uh, I don't know. You'll have to correct me on that one, friends. But Slater is hot right now. This is so, this is fun to watch. That's why manually the Widowmaker is actually riding as, as Heart Princess right now. Uh, and is uh, doing that, uh, allowing the flex and the main support 
to uh, stay up front. <laughs> Here comes a Gravitic Flux. You don't block. see this very often. Slater's got drag. Oh, Cyber's stunned out of it, though. Here comes Garchomp trying to respond. There's a Transcendence in play from the defense. Bobcats are going to throw out a Transcendence of their own. Back it off now as mainly has already oh. fallen. Jinja confident to take this place on top of the planner and just shooting down to the side of Cyber, avoiding the shield. What an aggressive Ant Matrix. Proto just made Jinja turn and run. What a play out of Proto. And kept Cyber alive through all of that as well, Billy. I mean, you're still looking at a Dragon Strike available here to Slater. So, I mean, Slater says, you know what? Discord plus my logs, uh, you're going to go down. And this is going to be .2 taken. Five minutes as we enter the hotel. Uh, Converse needs to make a, make a, make some moves here. They need to figure out these rotations. They need to take manually off this off angle. Otherwise, this is going to be a very quick completion. Dangerous, dangerous spot for Manly. No said. one can hide. Ammo hiding down close. Yeah, really good use of the Eversites. Cannot allow Manuel to get entrenched. That's exactly right. They know it. You know it. I know it, Billy. Everybody out in chat knows it. Don't give Manuel that angle. Indeed, they do run them off. Manuel now hide behind Cart. That headshot landed onto Cyber. Dragon's finally unleashed here, but Cyber falls just as Slater throws him out. Jimical gets caught by a rail as well, so Dragon's fall the way, so the defense stabilizes him. I mean, that's good stuff for them. They finally get, you know, their hold that they need, but I mean, they're still going to have to burn off four minutes plus uh, before they get the work done. I mean, they're going to be running in through at least three ultimate cycles here based upon how we've seen them playing so far. Yeah, I mean, I could consider maybe one good fight here from Converse, and then we're going to start running into some very broken fights from Converse on the defense. So, I mean, as long as BSC plays it smart and really portions out their ultimates as they come up and just really works for space making, I think that they win this out pretty easily. Garchomp is the pillar of Converse defense right now. Obviously, not just as the tank, but holding this corner. There's not much room to retreat. It's kind of do or die here. And Manually's found Hammer winning that duel on the outside. The overclock goes down as well. Manually denies your overclock. It's not need an overclock. Just give them one good shot and they will find multiple kills. I mean, they did that uh, with nothing. That was all in the neutral. Uh, so, I mean, they've got almost five ultimates coming as they round this first corner. I mean, for Converse, I, I think that they need to get a high ground presence. Uh, and then they need to just drop what they need to and manually just says, you know what? Bye-bye, Hammer. No high ground for you. <laughs> if you were not familiar with Manually's game, now you know Manually's got hands, y'all. I mean, ridiculous. We saw it on display with the Tracer last week. Now, I mean, absolutely on fire here with the oh, Wellmaker. Oh my God. Pops a Ryan. That one was clean as you like. Rhoda's going to pick up one as well. Transcendence is used to counter Garchomp's Gravitic Flux. And the Bobcats have everything they need to keep this cart rolling. Slater is unhinged right now. They've got position. They've got a Dragon Strike at their back. They've got a Gravitic Flux. I mean, you can Sigma 9 this uh, if you were feeling froggy about it. Yeah. Oh, no. No, that's bad. Hammer's gonna fall. Cyber has a Gravitic Flux ready to go, but there is no Baptiste. Cyber will have to do this with just Zen healing. Decides to solo old Orion, who does not have that Transcendence anymore. Actually got Jinja in that as well. I didn't see Jinja got caught. Cyber did it. Cyber gets it done. Unreal. No healing. That's just a Zen orb, and Cyber gets four. I mean, the ultimate balance was so out of whack that, I mean, really, they were just playing for time. 203 is an incredible uh, time bank, BT dubs, uh, for <laughs> for this Circuit, map. absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is almost, we're gonna have to see somebody from Converse do the same thing that Slater just did to them, because Slater just did them dirty. It was methodical, it was mathematical, as you put it out there with the geometry, just understood everything that they needed to do and got it done. Slater the Mathematician. We do like our nicknames around here, Billy. I, I think Slater was absolutely a mathematician on that one. But you know what? I was talking about standing up to the likes of Manually, and now y'all see why. I may not have given much pretense as to why. I mean, we saw, you know, we talked about how Manually goes on, was on the Tracer, but we didn't really get to, to see these Widowmaker skills, and holy cow. Uh, Manually's, Manually and Slater, I mean, it's, it's a deadly, deadly duo. I think that Genja needs a kind of echo. Uh, 
echo this. Uh, I don't know about Lonzo. playing echo here. Ah, no, no, no. I, no, no. I, I, I know, I know. I dad joked. I, I, I dad joked. Yeah, Grandpa, did it to I'm, me. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It sounded so serious that I, I actually had to take pause <laughs> for that. No, but I, I think that you, I think that you need to have that one shot potential because Sojourn does not have that. Uh, you got a lot more utility uh, than uh, than maybe the, the archer does. But I mean, I, I think the archer, man. They're just, it's just too good uh, in, in this composition. They're actually going to be running into a May here, so a little bit of a change. Yeah, that's a, a lot of a change. And I, honestly, I kind of expected to see this on Converse's defense. Uh, I expected Converse to maybe even when the JQ would play up close, because there's a little bit of disconnect here. But uh, you keep a Ryan on the Baptiste. Everybody's kind of playing at some of their strongest heroes here for Converse right now. That's what this cop is. Yeah, I mean, comfort, uh, especially when you get rolled a little bit like that, uh, does tend to make you uh, change up your, your philosophy. Now, the walls, uh, if we're going to go in with the May here, you have to be very cognizant of where these two snipers are at. And that's where, uh, you know, Garchomp is going to be so very vocal going into these fights. I'll come back around to your other point, though. I think that's also why, I mean, Converse's strategy is, is kind of working out well for him. Uh, you know, with Jinchuk relatively recently swapping to DPS, maybe doesn't have the variety of heroes. Maybe he can click head, sure, but isn't as comfortable on as many heroes as somebody like Slater. Maybe he doesn't have that, that Hanzo in their book. But, oh no, Garchomp not able uh, to keep anybody up. Not able to stabilize at all. They just ran into a wall of damage. That was incredible. Yep, and I mean, that that's the power uh, of, a, of a really good <laughs> scan DPS and manually. And then the flex DPS of Slater, um, really understanding you know these corners, uh, understanding the mobility that they're running up against uh, in Ginja, uh, really has marked very well in the back of that. What I mean, look at that Venomine, perfectly placed. And they did uh, drop the sights as well. I will say, I mean, on the other side, I liked Hammer's, the, the wall and the speed across. I mean, good teamwork out of Converse to safely cross that gap. Now they've waited out the Infrasight. They have an Ant Matrix on the ground. Can they get anybody with it? No, good disengage from the Bobcatch, using the lamp to get around that corner safely. Still, Cyber could be in a little bit of trouble. Does not want to go down this early. Yeah, has the ultimate in play and wants to just get it out immediately. Finds the slam with it. Garchomp backing away around the corner. Hammer out front, taking the brunt of the damage now. Transcendence here from the Bobcats, but they've lost pro to this Transcendence. Well, once it fades, it's only healing from there out of the orb, and that's not going to be enough. I mean, I, a little bit. I mean, Ginger comes up with a 3k BT up. dubs. Uh, but I mean, I would have held on to the Blizzard there. I don't think that you needed to use it. There might be a switch coming from Hammer uh, after the next death. But opportunity lost here uh, for them to gain a lot of valuable ground with the Blizzard. Uh, because we already know that the lamp was out. We already know that Transcendence was popped. You would have had a free Blizzard uh, to really maximize your distance here as we go around the chicane corner approaching the hotel. I mean, there's a lot that Converse can do now. They've got a, uh, they've got a sound barrier. They've got a Gravitic Flux. Ginja almost has another overclock online. Curious if still Kiwi wants to get aggressive with the sound barrier. You just hold it and wait for Cyber to cycle back through. Nope, they're going to get aggressive. Good wall. Cyber's in trouble. Lamp is beautiful, but still not enough. Cyber gets caught on that corner and immediately falls. Gravitic Flux file two. Both go down. Genical as well. Nice back-to-back -back fights here from Converse U. Okay, so I mean, they're going to have a pretty similar time bank. It's going to be like 425. Yeah, they're only about 35 seconds behind what the Bobcats had entering into Hotel Arsh. So, um, I mean, for Converse, you know, they, they've expended uh, some nice aggressive ultimates to make sure that they maximize the value of their distance taking. Now, Slater over to the Genji. We've got manually on the Ash. So we're looking for a sixth man here. They're, they're looking long game here, Jeff, uh, to be able to, you know, uh, maybe stall out a point, maybe, you know, wheedle off 15 extra seconds, hopefully find a pick with the Bob. So, I mean, we need to see a good rotation from Ginja here. Hammer needs to stay in the front, making sure that they're kind of cordoning off Cyber. We'll see how this works out. I mean, Slater and Jimical tried to rotate, but Converse read it and just put too much pressure down. I think Slater's going to give it a second go. Yeah, you can see he's using the deflect off of that door while manually trying to put in pressure from the front. So a bit of a pincer maneuver here from the Bobcats defense, but Cyber didn't feel comfortable. They had to rotate out of the window, back down low where they're going to drop this Gravetic Flux. The Rock hit the, the Cryo Freeze. What a brilliant body block. Oh, no. Unfortunately, it was for your own team. Shot Dynamite from up top. 
Slater goes down, but Manly's man able to strike back. Jemical as well. So defense is coming in with the goods. Gone versus stalled. Okay, so I mean, this is a, uh, yeah, I mean, still keeping yeah, was absolutely right. Almost got that right. Uh, but the block of Hammer actually blocks it. But the problem is, is that if they get to this point relatively quickly, uh, they could get this Blizzard out. It could deny everything that Bobcats have in their arsenal. That's gonna be real quick. Look how fast you oh. build it up to this old Ant Matrix. Denied temporarily by the wall. Overclock from down low, but you're firing it to double damage. Yeah, Proto got the better end of that deal for sure. Starting to drop down. Hammer saw that gets the Blizzard out before falling to Cyber. I don't know if anybody's caught. It's okay. I did get two. And they throw the Transcendence in. This turns into a win. I didn't know if Commerce were going to find the value with that. No, they get ultimate value out of that Blizzard. Even if they don't win this fight, Billy, in the end. But now there's a Gritted Flux. And things are looking up for Commerce University. Manually falls to the said ultimate. Garchomp... Nice little hypersphere punch combo, and Jibical's back in spot as well. It's going to be a blade here on the point from Slater. A desperate attempt to try to stall out the, the, the spear and the shield. I almost hit the sword and the spear again. One by one, wow. Converse will deal with the cleanup, and they cap with comparable time back. Ten seconds difference. What a blizzard that came out from, ha from Hammer. Uh, and then the aggressive... Uh, sound barrier after the transcendence comes through. I mean, the start to this map was absolutely a bomb from Converse. Uh, and then tough. they just kicked it into a different gear. Yeah, they kicked it into a different gear. Ginja really got aggressive on the Sojourn and got it done. I mean, oh my god, the rock was just a pixel off. If Hammer doesn't go into that freeze, it goes through and it hits him out of the flux. Oh, I don't know that I've ever seen that. A brilliant block by your own tape. Ah, oh, it just kind of just steps out in front of that M matrix. Probably should have backed up around cover, perhaps with the overclock. You know, got aggressive, wanted to make a play into that ant matrix. But still, despite you know that early pick from the ant matrix, Proto Converse turned that one around. Garchomp with a brilliant flux, and it's more than enough to turn the tide. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And, and Converse, you know, they they bend, but they don't break on their defense. They uh, get a comparable time bank. And they stay true. Hey. Yeah, I see it. They stay true to their identity, though. And, and, and we're going to circle back to this quite a few times. Is that they will bend. They'll lose a fight. But they won't give up the war. And 10 seconds difference. Ain't a lot of time. But they're going to have time for ultimate rotations here as they come out into the extra innings. Yeah, they went out with the early Hanzo to see where they were set up. And now they're going to move forward. Uh, it does uh, show some iron metal. Uh, they kind of got rolled in their own third point defense and then struggled on oh, no. the attack. What a brilliant wall. But look at this. Converse are in form. Slater melted. Cyber, no shot. You get out of there alive. Proto, I mean, just hitting your head on the ceiling. Nowhere to go. I mean, that is brilliant. It is efficient. The wall sets up everything. They actually forced the Bobcats to play their game now. Because we've got Slater. On the May, we've got Jibical on to the Lucio. So now you don't have the double sniper look. Yeah, they had to get all about zone. brawl. Yep. Needed that speed, needed that speed to keep Cyber alive. Uh, I mean, no. even for you know, Slater's making the swap over to their own May now. The uh, Converse are absolutely controlling the tempo of this match, and that's exactly what it looks like. Bobcats trying to match, and Converse are reeling in this. They are celebrating, and this car's continuing to roll. And the fact is that Garchomp already has, oh my god, already has a Gravitic Flux. They're going to have Window going around the Chicane Corner, and Hammer's going to have a Blizzard very, very shortly. The right clicks have been absolutely brutal, and they have got have their fourth point. I was thinking they have to spend the Flux just to secure this cap. They don't even have to spend that. Hammer block Cyber with a wall, so nobody even makes it down to touch. Ooh, nice little one-two combo out of Slater Emanuele. That's exactly what Bobcats needed, because Converse had all... I mean, they were in six gear. All the wind at their back. Ant Matrix up front from both teams, trying to trade out, and Jinja ends up on the better end of the trade. Manually strikes back, finds Orion. It's a... We'll take that clap back. Let's we'll see if Garchomp can turn it the other way. Sound Bear and Gravitic Flux invested, but no, the power of the butler is too much. I don't even know if this blizzard's enough. Nope, absolutely not. This is as far as Converse will get. 
that was the best pick that could have happened there in the defense. Coming out of manually, taking Hammer down with Blizzard in hand. Score. Oh, man. Because if, if, if Hammer stays alive there, they're getting around the corner just fine. Thank you very much. They can throw a wall up to keep Bob uh, out of the out of the, uh, out of of the the equation. Freeze him out. Uh, the fact that, that the May is gone. Yeah. I mean, they absolutely play that about as well as they could. They just got, you know, tooth stomped uh, in the very beginning. And now, uh, I mean, they're going to have 203 to defend uh, to get it just to the first corner of the chicane. There, there was a massive bounty out on Hammer there in that overtime. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was, it was huge. There was a massive bounty on his head. Everybody from Bobcats was hunting down the May. I mean, simultaneous headshot from Slater on their own May with Manually's Dynamite. And Hammer didn't even have a chance to use Cryo Freeze. <laughs> just uh, deleted back deleted. to spawn with you 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 ice demon <laughs> back to spawn <laughs> so for bobcats you know they have a win condition now uh, now it's going to come down to how do they execute uh and are they going to be able to really maximize these fight wins uh as they get them they do bring jimical back out onto the zenyata so healing is going to be a big problem but disengages are going to be a big problem as well. We'll see if Converse is... How aggressive they want to be? You know, can Bobcats just get Jimical set up? Yeah, maybe they don't even have to disengage. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Converse, they rotate in. Trying to get hyper-aggressive on it. Trying to force the issue. But they get turned away. Gonshop ate way too much damage from Slater. And Converse are lucky that their tank is still alive. Hammer! Who barely gets the Cryo Freeze off that time to the skin of his teeth, Billy? I mean, then the lamp's already out. So, I mean, this is all about rotation and confirming your kills. There we go. One, ah. two. Uh, Garchomp. Yeah. I think Converse needed to keep rotating all the way back out the building again. They kind of got stuck inside, and Jimical comes up big time. I mean, just hits pay dirt. I mean, it happens like that sometimes. Uh, now, the problem is that manually uh, hit a lot of dynamite damage and a lot of headshots uh, in that close quarter engagement. So, I mean, they're going to have the bob. The closest thing that Converse has to really stopping this bandwagon is a app matrix, and I mean, you're gonna have to take damage just to get that done. Converse do a good job of dropping down. Everybody makes it down more safely, Woo! which is not easy to do. Ant matrix up early from Orion, and Converse want to be aggressive here in their approach. A lot of healing out. Scorch up was so low. The bomb is there, but oh, it's not enough. Typical, still alive on the Zendiana, is able to take down one. Garchomp is dead, no shield, no damage mitigation, which means Slater can go to town, finds Hammer, and just sends Ginger running away, desperate to stay alive because that box of victory is so close. No, Slater finds that kill. Okay, I mean, we got 26 seconds. We've got uh, just a little bit of time. We've got this little bit of a pause with the payload, and you've got Dragon Strike and Transcendence coming up. Hammer needs to get this out. They need to touch the point. I get out, trying to split the defense in half, but Garchomp has made it down there. The immortality field used as well as Blizzard. The Blizzard has two in it, but the Transcendence is there at the wall! The wall is so good! The Transcendence is forced on the other no side shot. out of LOS of Slater! Proto goes down! The Gravitic Flux is monstrous! Converse University, hold this cart! 1.86 meters shy! Stop the Bobcats and go up 2 0 in the series. <laughs> Good lord! I said that Hammer had to get that blizzard out. That is what wins them the map. Holy cow! That fight was everything that I needed it to be, and then some. And they completely. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind, friends, we just heard this week NECC announced that they will be part of May Madness in Dallas, Texas, in a land for the ages largest event uh in in the country as far as collegiate uh esports is concerned and of course these two teams hoping they can fight to get a spot at that land taking place in may bobcats at that two and two record converse at one and three can't help but feel you know, they're kind of they're kind of right in that middle of the road billy and i'm not exactly sure where that line's going to be drawn i don't think that's been announced yet but you know both these teams want to be there oh yeah i mean there, there's two different uh Ways for them to qualify, so the CECC or the NECC. So, uh, I mean, this partnership goes burr. Uh, hopefully, you and I could be there in May to uh, kind of meet all these people that we've been casting true. for years. Yeah. That would be a dream come true. Get Chef and Billy, get Chef and Jeff uh, on <laughs> the uh, on this. 
please, uh, whoever can make that decision, but we'd love to have that happen. But I mean, the robots are coming out here from Cyber. This could be a problem. Yeah, and it's manually who already is a thorn in the side of Converse in this start from fight. Finds first blood. Uh, Cyber does eventually fall, but has pulled so much attention, and I think Garchomp's just kind of on an island now. First control, we'll go to Bobcats. Uh, it's going to be up to Hammer now. Uh, Hammer making the swap over to the May. Yep, uh, we'll see how this goes down. Uh, if you can get uh, Cyber kind of locked off, you can kind of avoid manually temporarily. But there's no mitigation. There's nothing other than uh, the, the, the great step of, of Ginja to get them out from a stick. So, I mean, there are four prime targets uh, for this pulse stick, and they've already got it. Oh, they're gonna have to win this without their primary source of healing, though. Stick needs to be big. No, it's not gonna get anyone. Lands on the Jonker Queen. Garchomp drops down low to avoid hitting any of the other targets on their team. It does leave a couple of vulnerable targets up top. One that Slater able to pick off before going down. Still, Converse have the numbers here. Manly continues to fight. Ginger falls under the Pulse Pistols. G uh, Garchomp can't seem to lock down the Tracer. It's Orion who has to come through and get the job done. I mean, this is still a broken fight. It's still Bobcat's point. Uh, this should take it out. Uh, but Cyber's back on the on the scene. They don't have the Annihilation yet. So I think that you, well, I say you should. You should give this point up, but they're not going to do that. Archon's going to take Cyber down. Here comes the Rampage. And Slater falls. Just tornado to death all the way back to spawn. Poor little ninja. <laughs> and it's only one ultimate. So, I mean, you've got that. But manually, he's going to have... Uh, another pulse bomb plus the uh, blade into this fight. I mean, this is going to be a very dynamic fight coming from BSC. Uh, Garchomp, you know, uses the rampage, so now they don't have that anti uh, proximity that's going to be able to go into this. So, sound barrier and the coalescence, everything coming up roses here for the Bobcats. Yep, look at it, Hammer once again with this blizzard. Slater's going to pull the blade first. There was a sound barrier out from Converse, and Slater just backs away, satisfied with that. Whoop. Dash out to avoid those shotguns. It was low as well. Cole is thrown in from Proto. There's that blizzard I was talking about, though. Jimmy Cole is able to get the sound barrier down. Cyber staying alive through the freezing winds. Hammer comes out. A crowd freeze right in front of the entire team, and Cyber pulls out the Annihilation, but Jin just shuts it down. The Death Blossom is stronger than the Tendrils. Now Orion finds Slater, and BSC are waning on this point. Converse have brought it all the way back. I mean, this is absolutely nuts from them. And I mean, what a well-placed blossom. I mean, the sustain is just too good. The damage is too much. I thought it was I thought Cyber's Annihilation was going to actually wipe the floor with Converse. Everybody was scattering and Ginger just goes running into the middle of the pack like a storm chaser. That was incredible. <laughs> nice, nice anecdote there like a storm chaser. Okay, I see what you're doing here. But I mean, manually is getting the job done, but there's not enough follow-up on the back of it. Slater has kind of gone silent here in map number three. The sustain from Typical and Proda has been good. The space taking from Cyber has been good. Garchomp has just been a little bit more aggressive and has really held these commanding shouts. And now you're looking for, you know, Hammer and Orion once again to kind of hold the fort. Yeah, Converse definitely holds it down on the point right now. They have the positional advantage as far as that's concerned. And anybody that walks through this doorway is just going to get walled off, courtesy of Hammer. Garchomp tried to tempt him in. Oh, the wall's a little late. Cyber was able to back up onto the other side. But so the first play and falters, and Slater picks up still Kiwi as Converse tries to rotate back to the objective. Woo! Manually overextends, though, on the stairs. But here comes the Bobcats with the Coalescence at their back. Wall to block off that healing, and Cyber just has to stay in one little spot. Here comes the Rampage. Slater, the only one hit by that. That, but Converse will make good on the one purple. Sound barrier now out from Chemicals. The Bobcats look to turn this fight, oh, but another brilliant wall indeed. Hammer holding on to a blizzard just in case, but Garchomp now confident to extend all the way out and chase these kills. Ooh, manually invested a late pulse. I mean, I think this is gonna be a swap here for manually. I don't uh, know. Manually so good on this out. map. Yeah, they yep. are. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Just, I don't know if that's the right play, but you know what? I'll catch you. You know better than I do. Well, we're going to see how this runs down. I mean, there's a lot more sustainable pressure here. Uh, I mean, Slater gets an early kill. That's something that you needed to crack this open, though. That was the perfect kill. If you're not going to get Hammer, get a Ryan. It was so close to that coalescence. 
That means still Kiwi has to use the sound barrier very early, but Cyber has dropped the Annihilation, so not a total waste. Now the Blizzard, once again, melts Cyber. Jemical gets caught out somehow on the outside of this point. Overtime forces Bobcats to run into the thick of things. Slater! Slater finds two, finds three! Slater might have just pulled this one from... <laughs> Ryan has to stay alive. No, can't do it. Didn't want to use the Coalescence. Bobcats flip it in the I mean, last it... possible second. Yeah, Proto would have popped their own coalescence there if, if Ryan popped. Yeah, up. exactly, got, exactly. Right, and they know. I mean, that's the macro game that they've been talking about all day. Is that they're going to go ahead and hold? Uh, they'll, they'll they'll lose the fight. That's fine. They get it. It's a ninety-nine. But now there's a Ginja Death Blossom ready to go, and nothing to defend against it other than this coalescence. Coalescence is out early. Both of our squads. There's the Death Blossom right in the middle of it. Not quite finding the value we saw in the very first point. In fact, the first to fall in the fight. The DPS are traded out. Now, Converse rotates down the stairwell onto the point, finding Slater. Slater just didn't slide out. They just gets melted, overrun here from the Converse front line. Speedy as you like with Shout and Lucio. This, this core gets around quick. Cyber arms up, has to touch. Overtime going as Converse have control once again. Shotgun into the back. Cyber can't block all that. We'll force out the sound barrier. Immediate response with the rampage. Deadeye from the top, blocked by the wall, and Cyber falls on this point. The best hope for holding down here, gone for the Bobcats, and it's looking a bit desperate here for BSC. I mean, this is great pursuit here, great patience as well from Converse. Now they're going to have a Blizzard to start off this next fight as we now wrote take down to i believe we're going to palace next so you're gonna have a sound barrier difference you're gonna have the uh you're gonna have the blizzard as well well-timed ultimates coming out from converse they're sitting on flashpoint uh and match point right now i i'm scared for the bobcats right now very very well-timed rampage out of garchomp bobcats couldn't heal up they couldn't catch up on any other sustain during the sound barrier from jimical Oh, but a good shot from Slater. Slater's been, been so good on this sojourn. Uh, it's found a couple of opening picks, and this time Bobcats are able to move in and clean up. Uh, a little bit of sloppy positioning right there because, I mean, you see uh, Slater kind of get the uh, get the jump onto Orion. And uh, then you see Hammer go down as well. So, I mean, all the cooldowns have been burned away. Uh, that was a lot more patient coming out from the Bobcats. Now they're going to have four ultimates going in this fight. I mean, Converse, they're going to have to find some value with this Reaper. Uh, we saw it happen good in the first fight. The second fight that we saw for the second point got immediately shut down because of that magnetic grenade. Could not break away from the damage. Bobcats uh, hoping they can get out from this blizzard, but no, once again, it's monstrous. A huge gargantuan blizzard from Hammer continues to just hold Bobcats in place. Catches them by surprise with these brilliant blizzards. Nice teleport and Slayer is dead. This is gonna be Converse grab a control. Well, I mean, the fact that, you know, we see a little bit of uh, good discipline on the side of the uh, Bobcats now. So, I mean, they got both their DPS ultimates. They've now got another Annihilation. Problem is, is that there's going to be four on the other side here, especially if Converse holds close uh, and kind of waits out this corner. Yeah, this could actually be uh, Garchomp getting another Rampage online, completely devaluing the push. Get it here pretty soon. Manually dies oh, during the dead off. I, yeah, no. uh, a bit of a take to show me, Billy. What happened? Converse went another. I, I don't know. I mean, other than the wall, uh, and then Ginja, you know, kind of anticipating where manually was going to come in at. I mean, you invested both your DPS ultimates and your sound barrier as well. So now you're looking at this annihilation versus the rampage, and it's huge. Oh, the wall comes down just in time. That was awesome. Cyber just has a sliver of health. It'll eventually fall to the DOT damage while Garchomp takes down manually with the jagged blade. Oh, lands that one around the corner. What a predictive shot. Garchomp is single-handedly keeping the Bobcats at bay during this overtime, trying to close out this 3-0, and he will. Converse upset BSC Bobcats and clean this one up in a 3-0. Man, I love this Converse squad. The spear and the shield are here to stay, Billy. 
I mean, and it was it was just a fight here and there. It was just the macro. It wasn't any singular one singular point. It was understanding when you needed to push, when you could be aggressive.